Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well out there. Big episode today. We're gonna to sit back and sift through my February financials just to let you know how I'm going as a full-time reseller on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. It's been six months now that I've been doing this full-time and I always love to sit back and have a look at my monthly figures just to see how I'm going. Now, I think this really does translate into what you guys are doing as well with your own business. Something to compare to, something to see and reflect and also hopefully motivate and inspire for you guys to keep on going to achieve some really good results in your reselling business. We've got a few topics that we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to have a look at the monthly revenue. We're gonna have a look at the monthly fees, the inventory purchased, sales platform performance, and the final cash flow position, or what my paycheck would be at the end of the month. So a lot of numbers in this one, guys. Hopefully you're excited for it. Remember to leave a like on the video if you get anything out of it. Let's get started. So let's dive into it, guys. We're gonna have a look at my gross revenue for the month of February. We'll pull the table up now. I've been able to sell 186 items this month, which was an increase, as you'll see there on the right-hand side, of 32 items from the previous month. My revenue has also gone up by $270 uh, to $7,298.23. My average sale price, though, has dropped by $6.82 down to $32.67. And my cost of goods was $1,338.46. So that's $150 less on the cost of goods of the items that sold. That's what that figure refers to. Uh, profit margin has held the same at 73%. So one big key consideration that I'm taking into this month of February is that it was only a 28 day month. So there's three less days, almost 10% less time to get the sales results in. So to be up by 32 sold items and hit 186 in a 28 day month, I'm really, really excited about that figure. And I'm also not too perturbed around the average sale price dropping by $6.82 because this month I've sold a hell of a lot more DVDs than I have in any other month. If you're watching my What Solds, you would have noticed that I picked up an 88 or a 90 odd DVDs, brand new DVDs. They're all selling between 10 to $15. So that's naturally gonna bring down my average sale price. So, you know, while there has been a really good increase there of 32 items, the average sale price dropping, I'm not too perturbed, like I said, because I'm just aware of what those items are that are selling. I'm not reducing my price. It's just that the items that I have are slightly less in value. But ultimately to get the sales in and to increase by $270, I'm really, really happy with the month of February from a gross revenue perspective. The sales platform performance as well is a very interesting one to have a look at for this month. And if we pull the table up to see where my sales have come from, Facebook, I've only had 12 sales come in for the month of February. And to be honest, they are mainly furniture items. I've not really sold anything more than my furniture pieces on Facebook Marketplace in the month of February. eBay though has increased by 42 items. I've now sold 172 items in just the last 28 days on eBay. Uh, Instagram as well has been a new uh, sales platform. I've been able to sell to the viewers of this YouTube channel. It's not something that I go out to do when I do my trip to the thrifts or my what solds or anything like that is to promote a product to sell. But I'm certainly starting to get a few inquiries from people that have seen an item during my trip to the thrift video and they wanna purchase it. And I think that's fantastic. I wanna look after you guys and give you a really good discount if there is ever anything that you wanna purchase. Um, so to have two sales come through through Instagram Instagram this month for the very first time was kind of cool. Um, look, I think firstly, while that's incredibly interesting to look at and see that eBay has gone up, Facebook has gone down, the next slide that we're gonna have a look at is my fees. And that has been the most interesting aspect of this month. So let's dive in and have a quick look at the fees for the month of February. Now, as you'll see here, guys, the fees have gone up considerably. I've sold a lot more on eBay this month than I have on Facebook Marketplace. And as a result, you have to pay more fees. My eBay fees have risen this month to $853, which was pretty much double what it was last month. My PayPal fees have really gone up as well by $115 to $210. And my postage charges, because I'm not selling on Facebook Marketplace, they've gone up to $1,219, an increase of $271. So my total fees, total money out, $2,283. That's an extra $804 in fees compared to the previous month. Now, there's a little disclaimer at the bottom there, my eBay and PayPal fees are for January 15 to February 15, which is the eBay billing cycle. I base it off my invoice that I receive on the 15th of every month. So while the exact items for the month of February aren't necessarily accounted for, 
in that figure of $853, I still counted as my February fee. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense there, but um, regardless of when the item sold, $853 is a lot of money in fees. And probably the biggest thing that I've learned there is that I've obviously been neglecting Facebook Marketplace and Facebook Marketplace has zero fees. I was selling at a time 30 to 40 to 50 items a month on that platform and I wasn't copying the fees that I am now copying through eBay. And I really do think that moving forward, I can't afford to just solely rely on eBay sales because it strips way too much out from a fee perspective. I'm basically promoting all of my listings at a roughly a one and a half to 2% as well, because I really do think that helps increase my traffic, helps increase my overall sales results. And it certainly does. The, the stats are certainly there to say that through promoting my listings, I've been able to achieve more sales. But my average fee is now 16% of my overall sales. And to me, that is just a massive, massive number. I don't want that moving forward for every single sale I make. So I will be placing more of a focus back onto Facebook Marketplace in the months to come. So in an effort to get back onto Facebook Marketplace a little bit more, I actually listed 15 items yesterday to kick off March. Being the 1st of March, I thought, let's just go and whack 15 items up on the Marketplace. And I sold a Canterbury Crusaders uh, rugby union jersey. Within the space of a couple of hours, somebody came around and picked it up for $50. Now, I'm calling it the Crusader effect because I've done a comparison here and I'll pull the table up that really has a look at what the item was listed on for eBay and had it sold on eBay, what would the numbers have worked out to versus the result that I actually got on Facebook Marketplace. And if I'd sold my item, the Canterbury Crusaders jersey on eBay at the listing price that I had, $59.95. So I bought it for $8. I've got the band for Australia Post My Business Plan, so the item would have cost $7.56 to post. And the fees at 16% with a 2% promoted listing would have been $9.59. So my, my profit at the end of the day on that sale of $59.95 would have been $34.80. And just by cross-listing it onto Facebook Marketplace and getting the sale, on Marketplace at $50, which is ultimately the buyer paying $10 less because they can collect the item. I've been able to have the cost of goods remain at $8, keep the shipping to zero and the fees to zero, and I've profited $42. So you can see obviously there, $7.20 in my pocket because I've sold the item onto Facebook Marketplace. Now, I know that I can't move my entire business onto Facebook Marketplace, and I know there's a lot of items that I sell on eBay that are eBay specific sold items, but there are certainly a lot of items that I have that I can be listing and selling on Facebook Marketplace to avoid the fees that you saw in that last table. So. That's exactly my mindset and I really thought I'd put that example in there to highlight the point that I'm trying to prove here. That while it won't be every single item on Facebook Marketplace, even if it's 20-25% you know, of the items that I sell through Facebook Marketplace, I'm going to be saving a hell of a lot of money because all of these figures, $7.20 times 25, that adds up to some considerable dollars in your pocket. So that's really the, the big focus for the month of March is to sell a few more on Facebook Marketplace and improve the Crusader effect. So there was a really good look at the revenue that we've had come in and the fees that were associated to the revenue that came in, but we also need to look at what I'm spending on a monthly basis as well. And that really majority of it comes down to the inventory that I'm purchasing to obviously go on to sell for a profit. So if we have a look at the table of inventory for the month of February. Remember, obviously only being a 28 day month, I've been able to purchase 349 items, which is a decrease of 29 items, but I'm still pretty happy with the fact that it was a 28 day month and I almost got to my numbers of last month. The gross purchase amount was $137 less and I've pretty much purchased my items at the same average sale price. $7.07 .07 was the average for those 349 items. It was only a decrease in 18 cents, so I'm not too disappointed about that either. Look, I think if I had a full 31 day or a 30 day month with an extra couple of days of sourcing up my sleeve, um, I would have definitely gone over that you know, 370 odd uh, mark that I had last month. So I would have probably hit 400 in my eyes, I think for the month of February, if I had those extra days. So to be there and thereabouts on the averages, I think inventory was a bit of a tick for this month. I bought really good items 
and I felt like I bought quality items as well. So I was getting them at a relatively low price and I was also buying items that I believed would go on to sell in a relatively quick space of time on eBay. And I think that's just through experience of being out there in the thrift 10 hours every single week, three to four days of sourcing every single week. It's just only improved the way I'm sourcing my items. And, and really that just comes down to time for any of you guys out there that are trying to source low, high quality items. So. Um, good one there in the sense of inventory for this month. I was pretty happy with the way the numbers turned out there. All right, so we've had a look at the money that's come in. Now we've had a look at the money that's gone out. And really now here's the point that we have a look at what would be the ultimate paycheck. So if I pull the table up, we review the money in. It was $7,298. The money out on fees, postage, and the inventory purchase, that all totaled up to $4,751. The cash flow position, the difference at the end of the day that is still in my pocket is $2,546. Now, that's a pre-tax figure, gross $2,546. Um, but I do have the benefit of YouTube and these videos and the money that I earn through YouTube on a monthly basis. Fortunately for the month of February, that has actually gone up 64%. And I've been able to earn $515 here making three YouTube videos every single week. So that has ultimately helped me get my figure of gross earnings up to a little over $3,000. And that estimate over the course of a year at $3,000 gross works out to about a $36,000 a year salary. So look, it's, it's nothing too impressive by any means when I'm working every single day and doing a heap of hours to only gross $3,000 in earnings. I don't really look at it so much as that because I've chosen to put a lot of that money back into the business to grow the business quicker. I'm happy to take less of an annual salary of 36,000 for instance, um, because I know that over time, the cause of buying more items will cause the sales to increase faster and I'll be able to get myself to the standpoint of where I wanna be around that $50,000 a year salary. So short-term pain for long-term gain is definitely the way I'm going about things, but I'm also really buoyed by the fact that YouTube has been able to hit $515 as well. So some key takeaways that I wanted to dive into just to wrap up this episode uh, for the month of March that we have coming up. A few things that I'm gonna do differently are, I'm gonna actually reduce my eBay listings from 15 a day that I've been doing down to 12 every single day. That's gonna result in 372 listings on eBay for the month of March. I'm also gonna cross list for the very first time in the last few months five of those listings onto Facebook Marketplace every single day. So in effect, my listings per day will actually be more like 17 items a day. It'll be 12 and five split between eBay, Facebook Marketplace. That means I'll have 155 listings put onto Facebook and I'd like to think that I can get a 57% uh, a 50% sell through rate on that. So hopefully 70 to 75 items on Facebook Marketplace sold. Uh, Increase my purchased inventory to 400 items at an average cost of goods of $7, which is what it is at the moment. I'd like to spend $2,800 on inventory. So the overall outcomes of making those three changes for the month of March would mean that I would decrease the postage costs because I'll be selling to people locally here through Facebook Marketplace. I'd also be reducing my overall fee percentage on the total amount of earnings that I have. If it's about 15% at the moment, taking into the Facebook Marketplace sales that I've had, uh, if I could drop that down to 10% overall because of the sales that I get on Marketplace moving forward, that would increase my overall cash flow. Uh, for the month as well. A few more dollars in my pocket, which is certainly what it's all about. So look, that's all YouTube aside. YouTube will just take care of itself. I'll just keep putting out three new videos every single week. It's a real passion project for me, making these videos, trying to help you guys out there with your own reselling business as I try to develop my own reselling business. But um, I don't really care about or focus on those numbers on that side of things. It really is more focused around the business and how that's going for the month ahead. So they're gonna be the three small changes that I make. And, and let me know in the comments below if you think I should be making any other changes. Let me know what pains and positives you've seen in the month for yourself in February. Um, and that really just rounds it out for today's episode. So I hope you've got some value out of it. I do these videos to try and help you guys gain a bit of perspective uh, in the whole process of running a business and the numbers behind it. I think really the big key thing as well here while I do these videos is that I hope you're doing these recaps yourself. It doesn't need to be on camera talking to people. It just needs to be you at home reflecting on these numbers because 
seeing the fees that came out for this month has really caused me to look into how I'm actually selling my items. If I wasn't looking at these fees, I would probably just continue on and sell 100% on eBay. But I can see the fees are pretty nasty and I wanna now split that 75-25. And that's ultimately gonna help me moving forward. But it all came down to looking at my monthly numbers once a month. So if that can be something that you take away, making sure that you're checking your numbers, then that's gonna be a positive for you moving forward. But uh, hope you've enjoyed it, guys. That's gonna wrap it up there. I don't know how long we've gone. I've been rambling for a little while now. I look forward to catching you in the next episode. A little bit more lighthearted. Trip to the thrift on Thursday. Always pumped about doing that video. We'll see you then.